it's a AAV based uh, gene therapy now um, has uh, already approved two studies uh, for clinical use that um, is uh, Roctavian uh, that was um, approved in August last year and uh, it is a hemogenic that was approved by Mufilia B uh, just in February this year. Um, both uh, uh, studies are extensively published uh, uh, and the outcomes are very promising with respect to um, those patients that uh, do no longer need any um, factor consumption. The main difference between these two studies is that in hemophilia A with Octavian there is a decline of the expressed factor activity over time. Um, so after about three years there is about the average um, or the mean factor levels is about one third of uh, the peak level after about one year. Um, so um, we can expect that after five to eight years those patients may have to go back on a prophylactic regimen. Uh, in hemophilia B it looks uh, more stable with respect to the duration of the um, factor level expression. Uh, so we expect more than 10 years stability. A challenge in hemophilia A is a uh, um, high proportion of patients that have to underwent immune suppression because of ALT elevation. And here I'm sure that the protocols uh, for management and immune suppression for management these LAT elevations and for immune uh, suppression will improve and will uh, uh, facilitate uh, the treatment and will make this easier for the patients uh, in, in the future. Uh, in hemophilia B, the immune suppression is much uh, less uh, significant. It's in about uh, 20% um, of the patients and, um, and for a shorter duration. Uh, so now it's uh, therapy is licensed and uh, will now become a part of the, our treatment portfolio that we have in the respective uh, countries. Uh, it will start slowly, I think, because we need some experience and also the regulatory environment have to be uh, prepared for these new treatments, uh, but they will become a very promising option for the future.